Welcome to my channel. This is Safel's Creative Media Concepts and you already know, this is where we create stories to inspire your lives. So this is one of the new show that I have on my channel, alright? It's all about Safel's Chill Chat where I get most of my friends that are in the same business that I do and we just sit here, chill and chat about anything, you know? Talk about filmmaking, photography or anything. So this is the second episode. Um, I've done one recently with my good friend Tony where we spoke about the contrast between film back then and film now. So today I have on set my friend Kaisha Randall. We don't really know what we're going to speak about but let's see. But she's an actor, dancer, scriptwriter. She's everything. Alright, so stay tuned. Yes. Been waiting on this, right? <laughs> you more than me, trust me. Because I'm nervous every time I'm supposed to sit down with you and talk about something, you know. I'm, I get nervous. Yeah, I mean, I've been asking you for us to just sit, have a talk. Oh, yeah, because you can remember most of our conversation when we finished talking, we were like, Jano, you know, so we should have record that. Hours after, <laughs> like hours. And it's entertaining and it's edifying, and we just want to share with our friends thing, all right? So we're going to make it a norm as from today. Anytime that we recognize that we're having a good conversation, we're just going to click record on the camera. Yeah. Are... I mean, we have tried in the past. You know, we don't normally get to do it until after we realize, you know, the cameras are early. But, all right, who's going to hold who accountable? You or I? Cause... Well, all right. Both of us going to really take it on, all right? But this is it. Been waiting on it, right? <laughs> so have you been? I've been good. I mean, I'm keeping good with COVID and everything. So, yeah. You were off the island, right? Yes, I was for a little while. You went away. You not ever said Safel, boy. You know, say I won't be here. I did. You did. <laughs> I did. I did say Safel. You know, my life's gonna be changing. Um, in the next couple of months. Remember, we had that December conversation. Aisha, your life always changed. No, right? I mean, you know, something had happened in terms of just even my relationship. It was changing, and I was like, so well, I don't know. I may be, you know, I may not be home, or I may be moving, uh, you know, out of parish. I may be moving out of country. I don't know. So we did have the conversation, yeah, yeah. you know, that based on just how things were going relationship wise work wise i just wasn't sure i would be you know down the road from you <laughs> yeah, people don't know this so people don't know i live up the hill and you live yeah, down yeah, the hill yeah most people don't know that you know yeah but, but uh, i mean we did something together when we spoke about storytelling and yeah, we did, yeah. that was uh, a great video you given i was young <laughs> What funny, you know, you remember that we, we shot that video about one year before. I hope, yeah, that video. yeah, it was, it was a year, it was a year before it actually went out, so it probably would have been maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago. It was oh, really? long, it was oh, long, man, it was long, yeah. I mean, that's something that I'm struggling with, you know, really Put editing. Well, I'm always eager to film it, but yeah. when it comes down to like editing and stuff like that, I'm it's lazy with editing too. Um, because I do have the ideas and I do know how I want a project to look. Yeah. Um, but in terms of going back home after the after the execution, going back home with all of that footage is kind of daunting. I don't know if if that's something that filmmakers, um, you know, on a whole undergo. I'm, I don't consider myself a filmmaker because I don't know that I. It's not even don't know. I don't have content like some of my other you know um counterparts in 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 this fraternity so i wouldn't say that i'm a film maker because i don't have the work to prove it but i mean you know there are there are different parts of filmmaking too you know there's a the storytelling aspect of it and the directing aspect of it so when i do capture something um it takes forever for me to edit it I you understand. know it's just that it's just not your line that you really find a lot of passion in. But I love editing. You love editing? I do. <laughs> so. I just can't move from going through all of that footage. It's like it takes me a while. I know once I sit down to edit, mm -hmm. I am going to be, uh, you know, all hands on deck. And I can be in the editing room by myself because okay. I'm a storyteller. Most you know, ever. and I always say... Filmmaking is make-believe. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You, you, can have a, you can have a script, 
shoot film it a certain way and then you get you know you because every filmmaker you really want to ensure that you have um what we call b-rolls or you know cutaways and stuff like that and so you may find that even when you go back to to the editing room the story starts to look a little bit different you know so there are two storytellers i mean there are three storytellers there's the well it's two because filmmaker and film director is used interchangeably but um there is the the writer and then there's the filmmaker so there are two storytellers in the room and then there's the editor and then there's the cinematographer so there it's we're all storytellers just trying to ensure that we put our spin and you know our style on on the film well i think i want to reshuffle that what you just said so there's a filmmaker and there's a storyteller there's a writer we're all storytellers but when you look at it right Aren't we all filmmaker because No, we're each all one of we're <laughs> all storytellers. We're not all filmmakers. Uh, me, uh, me, what, well, that's true. That is true. But who's a filmmaker? Because a filmmaker really gonna rely on a story they rely from a writer. On a story. Correct. So the filmmaker is basically the person that is charged with the directing or the producing oh, so of the film. Directing. So um, I'm not saying he's just <laughs> directing. I'm just saying that's the person that is tasked with that responsibility. Mm-hmm. A writer writes, a film, di- a film director directs, a cinematographer, cinematographers or whatever they do or, or edits. And so um, usually there's a crossover. You find a crossover when it comes to film directing and editing and cinematographer mm-hmm. and cinematography mm-hmm. so you probably won't have the writer in the editing room because their work is already done the story is completed but more often than not the director is there the editor is there the cinematographer is there um, the producer is there these are the additional storytellers in the room who have their individual styles yeah, that yeah. they want to put in a particular um film we're all trying to f- to find to tell our own stories um in the craft that we've you know managed to hone and funny you know it's the, the editor is the one that really really give that final story to whatever is being filmed or whatever is being um written because you can tell the story in a very different way but and the cinematographer or the director is really going with what you're writing but when the editor get everything he tell that story in a that's different that's way that's you what say, wow. that's what i'm saying i'm saying you know you can film it from the writer's perspective but once you get into the editing room that story can change because at the end of the day which is why it's important that you have the cinematographer in the room um the film director in the room and even the producer in the room because um you can have a particular story on script mm-hmm. and then it's just not it's not maybe for whatever reason it's just not coming together in the editing room and you realize like, i've been a part of a film before where i had the privilege to be in the editing room because i was named as one of the producers for the film and so sitting down um i felt so honored because one i'm a storyteller and i love to see how the story comes together but there was just something that wasn't it wasn't clicking the way it was on the script and you know i had to turn to the director and say how do you feel about calling back the actors in and then we just put in a particular scene it was never in the script but if we can get this scene in it would make the editing room feel a little bit more charged with okay this is a good story so we had to go back get the actors in um prep them for something that they had never seen in the script before Mm -hmm. it was very impromptu and it added so much depth to the script and it was also me just saying to the director because that sometimes your film directors can get so locked into what the script says you know and you have to be be able to go go where the story tells (laughs) like when i write um i never know what my characters are gonna turn out to be yeah and i mean i sleep sometimes i go to bed and i go to bed and the character wake me up in the middle <laughs> of the night and just be like i feel like i should say this yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and, I, and i get up and i start penciling it down and i start writing so give your story room for your character to grow because if you go in as you know the all pen and mighty person who every character needs to be the way that you want them to be then you'll never tell a good story Ooh, you know awesome. and so we ended up putting in that that part that was charged and i had to say to the director this is what filmmaking is about it's made believe the audience didn't know that this wasn't in there but the moment we dropped it in there was so much depth to that story so yeah i mean me as a editor and also a director it's very challenging for me to like edit for a director I think sometimes they are. Uh, it's like 
I want to give it my touch. I want to. I'm feeling something and I want to bring it out because I'm also a director, right? right. So what some director do is that they will like say, all right, editor, give me your cut first. Mm -hmm. And then they will look at it and they will probably like, wow. Yeah. But you're going to have the director's cut right. and then you have the editor's cut. Right. And then they will look at it and then they will <laughs> take some from here and take some from there and then bring forth a, a good masterpiece. Because that's it. You have to give the editor space. You know, the editor can't really work with a uh, scriptwriter here, producer here, editor here. He just want to do his thing. But the editor gets a script too. I mean, everybody has a script, and then the, then there is the producer script, which I've had the privilege of having a producer script in hand, um, being an assistant. Uh, what they call it first assistant director um which is not what people think you don't direct the show you really just direct the production team right and to just ensure that everything is on point um right and so your script looks a little different but everybody gets a script so everybody has a general understanding of what the story is um there ought to be meetings had without the actors i mean you know between production manager um director producer first assistant director um so that everybody is on the same page in terms of what the, even for the cinematographers what the coloring will be what the grading will look like so that there is no surprise inside of the editing room i mean yes you leave space but you don't leave space for the editor to be like don't worry i got it you understand i have my own style coming in and this is what you're going to get it's not it's not that kind of show you know everybody is on the same page and I've and I know for certain that there is no director or producer that's gonna hire an editor and say um, do your own thing where that is concerned you know what I mean yeah. but they hire you for a reason they know the quality of work that you can put out they know the, the color grading that you can add or whatever it is they know your style so they they've already hired you for your yeah. style you never get in because Most definitely. you know the equipment more than somebody else uh, you understand if the, it I, was even that I mean you would just hire any editor hire, right <laughs> you hire people for them talent you you know what they for. can bring correct so um i don't know that an editor goes into into the room and just be like oh, i'm just gonna do my own thing there there has to be a conversation that is had and of course in that inside of that conversation there you know should be that dialogue that says you have room to do you know your style because that's the reason we brought you here or you know what um the director wants a particular kind of style um and we just want you to, to stick close to that which brings me to my next point of you know finding your style in filmmaking it's very important that even if you have a style you dabble in different things too because it makes you so like you will have people who do short films and they do music videos and they do documentaries they do mockumentaries um, they do feature films it's important to have that vast portfolio it makes you a little bit more marketable um, and even in doing that you can still implement your style because your style really comes down to your storytelling um, abilities or capabilities it comes down to your tone too like what is it that you want to communicate every good storyteller knows the the key information or the key emotion that they want people to feel so for me i'm strictly drama like anything that i do it's gonna be tear jerking it's gonna really pull on your heart for some people their style is comedy and they dabble in that and they do it so well for some people it's romance or for some people it's science fiction um we have you know filmmakers here in montego bay that really want to do um thrillers we don't see a lot of that coming out of the jamaican film film space and so you have to find what your style is. It doesn't mean that you're going to just do that every single day of your life, Most you know, but you double. And yeah, as, I speak, as I speak about style, I mean, style can even go to a little bit further. I mean, you're speaking about, all right, sometimes it's romance and sometimes it's drama, but within romance and within drama, you still have your own style or you bring across um, drama or you Correct. bring across romance. What's that? What's yeah. that? What's that? Um, paramount emotion that you want people to feel uh, for me because i'm talking for me now for me that's what film what that's what your filmmaking style is you understand when people see your work um even if you're not working with the same actors when they people are supposed to close them eyes yeah, yeah. hear what your actors are saying and be like i know that's i know that's uh, a film yeah, yeah. well well to be I honest to be to, to be honest you think you could recognize 
any of my work out there? I can't recognize your work, but I can tell you whose work I would be able to recognize with Dario. my eyes closed. Yes. Dario, yeah. I would be able to recognize Dario's work with my eyes closed. There's a certain key emotion, no matter what he's doing, yeah. whether it's thriller, um, drama, comedy, there is a key emotion mm -hmm. that he always... I don't know how him do it, and I don't tell him enough. I don't big him up enough, but he has an acute ability to, no matter what he's doing, tell the same story. So who's um, Daria again? Daria Shields. That's my future husband. I joke, I joke, I joke, <laughs> I joke, I joke, I joke. <laughs> That's something we need to talk about uh, off the year, all right? <laughs> but Daria, I mean, Daria is a really good friend of mine. Um, we d I don't know that we're peasing apart, but we're peasing apart. You know what I mean? Like, he is one of them friends that I can be really honest with. Um, yeah, I can be really honest with Dario. And we work a lot together. A lot of what I know from filmmaking, directing, is just what he has said. You know what, Kai, I have a project and I want you to work on it with me. So most of my experience in, in the acting industry, or not acting, but film industry, mm -hmm. is really due to him. Well, let's speak about that. I mean, you were featuring one of his movies, right? That Shadow in the Dark? Yeah, Shadow in the Dark. So that, that <laughs> film I told you about earlier, yeah, yeah. where, you know, we were in the editing room and there was just something that was missing so we had to get get the actors back in that was one of those films where we you know the story how it was on on script or how it was scripted there was just certain things that you know we needed to fix and then we had to do that in post so uh it comes down to acting since you were among acting and things like that all art it is is it, do you think acting is a innate thing or you can practice <laughs> it's both. I mean, what is it for you? Um, it's both for me. I, I, I have a natural talent or a particular proclivity for the arts, and that includes acting. Um, and uh, it was just natural for me. Like that's an ability that I had from very early, and I think that was just due to. Um, I think before I knew I was an before I knew I was an actor, I knew I was a good storyteller. I could tell stories. Um, I knew I had a talent when I could make adults laugh. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I'm not a comedian no. Wait, wait, wait. But even yeah. at even at you know, eight years old, nine years old, yeah. um, going to primary school, going to high school, I realized I would open up my mouth and adults would be cackling, you know what I mean? That would be cracking up and I'm like, hmm. I can get big people to really sit down and listen to me like a girl and behave like this. I know I had a talent. Um, my aunt, bless her soul, she was the person who recognized from very early that I had, you know, these special gifts. And so she ensured that whatever, um, what do you call it, uh, like summer, summer programs or we call them camps or whatever. So she would have enrolled me in, you know, acting camps, modeling camps, just to ensure that, you know, I, I had that I had that um I had that early mentorship and then there were times when there were times when um I you know when I I mean I'd get involved at school so I do things within that extracurricular activities landscape um but I really got formal training in Montego Bay from a company that was called Dance Spirit. It still is, is it's still existing, like the members are present, but mm -hmm. it's not operational. And then when I went to Kingston for school, I got I got trained formally with Quilt Performing Arts um, Company. So I was a part of two professional companies that helped me to kind of hone my craft, okay, okay. where singing, acting, dancing was concerned, just that discipline of performing arts. So, uh, okay. yeah. All of them, what do you think is my favorite that you do? Singing. Singing. I, I mean, sure. not remember you were singing. I know, and this is why I said it's the favorite because I know I say, yeah, go come. Even this acting year, I said no. Sing my song. I know, sing but my, I know this is going to come. Sing no. my selling then. No. And I sing back something. No. Yeah. I have forgot to show all of your footage <laughs> there where you have. I'm the amount of times that I've said, I'm not singing. Yeah, no. Of all the talents, um, are all the craft that I've had to develop, crafts that I've had to develop, uh, singing is not the one that I most readily, you know, just jump out and do. And that's just because I have things that I need to sit down on a therapist's couch and work out where my singing is concerned. But anything else you ask me for do, I'd probably do it. As we were speaking about acting, I mean... Sometimes I go, <laughs> I thought I would become an actor, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but 
one of those like real funny actors not the funny funny ones like steve work i'm talking about man like martin lawrence or uh, What's the difference uh, between a Martin Lawrence and a Steve Urkel? Uh, get back to that, but oh my God! <laughs> but like a Martin Lawrence or uh, Jamie Fox. What's or, the difference between a Martin Lawrence and Jamie Fox and a Steve Urkel? Come the, on. The thing is, they, they they can transition smoothly to this like serious movie. And my f- and and Jaleel, let me call Steve Urkel by rightful government name. Jaleel can't do that. Yeah, since recently. Not He's bashing. always been able to do it. All right, sorry about even bashing Come whatever on. is is really there, but 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 my, my my point was um I wanted to be like a Martin Lawrence or a Jamie Fox or a Will Smith, you know, like like I I, I like giving jokes and and things like that, and I always could see myself like becoming one of those guys, uh, and to see where I'm still among filmmaking, where I'm like directing and filming and editing, I'm like wow. And I have the opportunity right now to be an actor, and I'm not taking it. Why? On. Where's that opportunity? Can I get it? <laughs> but remember, you know, we we we're making films and we're making short stories and stuff like that. So I can um, easily decide to say, all right, I'll be the protagonist or or whatever. But my true passion is really within uh, using the camera, you know, and editing and directing. That's where I find my passion. And right you now. do it so well. Like I can do what you do. I mean, and you know, I could not do what you do. I think you could. <laughs> I think you could. I think it. I think it would take you less time to learn the craft than it would take me to learn what you do. I will never write a good story. Man, about story, man, about acting, and acting. What that's about? Yeah. Well, no, I think I, I can. Safel, you tell stories all the time. I, I You're do. a filmmaker, yeah, I, and here's the thing: you write your own scripts. <laughs> <laughs> you never called me yet and said, Kai, write a script for me. True, you always true. called me and said, you know what? I have a concept. Let's just get it done. Yeah. True, true, true. Your name, concept, where, where your name? Media, creative media content for a reason. Even that, 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 um, advertisement that we did uh, yeah. advertisement i did with jada yeah. you know jada is one of us and she really did her thing in that you never have, ask, you never have well, somebody a script writer you just go on you just say you know what Doing this. we're gonna do it today what? that's just you on set all the time you just have a concept and you'll be like all right i just need people around me one that i can trust two i know who can do the job three i know who can take directions i understand when me say yeah and just know i say all right i'll take it out of my brain as someone want it that is true i literally never really work with a script so never. you're a storyteller yeah, i do yeah. so it's just me to, to just put it on paper before i go yeah, i mean even sometimes i go i went by a nigga i don't know if you saw that video and i, and I was just I filming I mean, myself you know last, um that was the last post you made to your youtube channel well the last post i made um it was oh, when my, you made that uh, and the nigger no, one no no i have a new show now man we're called i even working on some hand movement this is quick tip Tuesdays. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't see that yet. I don't see that yet. I just know that you'd released two videos lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one, um, the chill shot, which is the first episode oh, of yeah, this. Yeah. And then there is the, um, the Negril. The I Negril. think, yeah, yeah. I, which I like that one. And I was just having fun on And most people are asking like, oh, do you do that by yourself? And yeah edit it so I fast know how you do it you don't know i know how you do it what, what do you what, oh, yeah. what, what do you think Safel, i've been on set with you <laughs> so i know your secrets right i know i know how you get the shot just by yourself we're not gonna tell your secrets what i don't know is really how you edit it so fast well, all right so that's the thing i know um so i should like i'm editing so when i get into post i'm it's just putting it together it's i'm just cutting off this and cutting off that so that's a very easy way to really edit your thing fast, but it's not that it would work right across the board, right? So if you're doing like a big film, you can't do it like that. Right. You need room to probably go for a different shot or go for that or right. this. Right. But like a quick video to put on YouTube, you just shot that like you're editing it, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try what I swear. I don't know. I need wine and rum and them something there for really boost myself and be like all right you're going to sit down and edit now because editing takes time let me tell you why it takes me time i'm such a storyteller and i'm such a perfectionist when i'm telling a story that it takes me a little bit longer than you to edit something because i'm always looking for you know telling the story in this perfect way sure. you know Even and so yeah i've learned that done is better than perfect 
and I used to struggle with that, you know. So that's why you're seeing me um, posting more stuff recently rather than there trying to perfect in yeah. that one thing. What about bringing over those new talent and those new things that you learn and try to perfect each and every other um, video? The, the latest thing I've done where done is better than perfect is concerned is um, so I've recently decided, you know, I'm going to go for it where hosting is concerned because mm. I love chat. You did tell them, yeah, right? Man, you tell them that already. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. chat. I <laughs> love chat. I feel like God gave me this special gift and talent yeah, yeah. to bless people's life. And so I don't care. Now no, I embrace my no chatting. Effort. Correct. It's effortless for me. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to, I've been doing, you know, MC duties and stuff like that. So I'm going to do this full time considering now I'm out of the corporate world. I'm out of corporate Jamaica. I want to start doing my own thing, yeah, which you were encouraging hey, me to do for a hey, very long time. Hey, I just speak about that. I mean, I was <laughs> even thinking about that yesterday. I'm saying like, oh, wow. Yeah. When Kaisha, when they talk, I mean, I say, Kaisha, it's time for you to build your brand. I know, you I know. keep on building I know, up people. I know, I know. So I started, I started stuff, right? And I mean, I it took me a while because I kept saying, you know what? Um, the the rate sheet has to be perfect and whatever. I do a rated rate sheet there, you see, and I absolutely hated it. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let myself stand in my own way. You know, sometimes we're the weapon formed against ourselves. So I decided to just let it stay the way it is for right now. And I sent it to a bunch of people and I'd be like, okay, if you know anybody who needs a host for like weddings, baby showers, whatever it is, corporate events, you know, this is what I do and this is the package that I'm offering. And so I sent that out. But I mean, the nudge me teeth because the whole time I sent it, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> because I'm going to so, do it over. You're so versatile, man, in what you do. It's just that now you need to really recognize what you need to specialize in, Correct. you know. But nothing is wrong right now yeah. to really do a bunch of stuff right now because yeah. you have to pay some bills, yeah. right? I mean, I've been doing a bunch of stuff for a very long time. What I don't want to be is like a jack of all trades and master of none. Okay. So I've already pinpointed that talking, you know, it. You can see it on my face even right now talking to you. I come alive, you know. When I have to sit down and talk to people, I really come alive. And I'm like, oh gosh, this is my special gift. I know that. So you don't talk about you can't come on this show and have no chill chat with Safel. You don't know I what don't to speak to about. Like, I, don't know what to, I mean, Safel, you start giving me some topics. So I'm just like, are you sure I'm the person for the job? <laughs> yeah, I you just keep on like, saying that. Yeah. And that's another thing too. I doubt myself sometimes. Even though, you know, I know I can do it. And people believe yeah. in me. I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I can do that, you know. And that's, that's something that we all suffer yeah. from but another thing i mean remember i was saying that this show is not about like interviewing persons or anything like that as i said we just always chill and chat and i just want to record these moments so this is us just chilling and chatting right so it's no right or wrong answer to anything that i'm asking or anything like that right so but let me ask you now coming when you ask you that question for me but me that i gonna ask you right now let me go get married no <laughs> No, I'm, but no, me know what you're saying for me. No, me know what you're saying for me. But anyways, not the time for that conversation. Um, I remember you sending me a bunch of stuff that you know we could have potentially spoken about, mm -hmm. and one of them was just especially with COVID because we're all going through this together, mm -hmm. and we're talking about filmmaking and just the arts in general. At the top of COVID, we saw where theater had really stopped. You know, like there was nobody going to the theater anymore. Um, and we are a part of a group, a part of a very active WhatsApp group that is filled with people who do what we do. And I remember, at one, even I don't talk in that group, I never opened my mouth in that group. Oh, really? uh, <laughs> so I can't nice. bother. I just can't bother sometimes. The conversations get ahead of me by the time I come home. But um, one of the conversations was, you know, is, is, uh, theater dying mm. or is is TV dying. tv dying or the way is 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 just performing arts in a general because i mean what we do is very physical mm. you know what i mean um uh, and it's just one of those things even if people are watching it on their tv bodies had to be in a room to get a particular shot you know what i mean and they're like oh if you know no interaction and all of that how does that work for your craft so my question to you is with everything that's going on um and you know the world going digital mm -hmm. do you think that will change for our landscape of filmmaking acting directing music producing music directing all of that and what change do you think may happen or what significant changes well uh, as we recognize we can see that it's already changing because most 
of the stuff that we are watching right now is either very very short <laughs> as you can see so these apps are taking over all right like instagram tiktok whatever apps is taking over so no one really wants to really sit and watch like a long feature movie even though it has its place right but shorts are really taking over and another thing that is really taking over are music videos and those are some of the stuff that i'm leaning to more music videos and weddings and most of those like even documentaries and sad enough you know you know because i'm leaning more to documentary than fictional movies <laughs> interesting no 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 offense or anything no, like I, that no you <laughs> you like documentaries yeah. for a very long time no you've always said that but it's interesting yeah it, it, it's just more touching to me you know mm. and i uh, like that, that a movie that a romance drama movie or it, it's just that uh most of the movies I mean, are made up right docu- that's what I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> say, documentaries are fast. real stuff fast. Uh, and that's why I, I feel it more you know and there's nothing that i'm adding it's not that it's easier but i really feel it more to like tell someone life and just go there and to just document a real life situation and then put it on screen put it on screen to really share with um the the, the world fictional movie as its place because you can really do a good movie that can inspire someone right. in many different ways Correct. but i think people are abusing fictional movie these days because it's no longer more of like entertaining someone or inspiring someone it's more of like who can do the best i don't know that i agree i mean true there are truths to what you're saying but i mean for me i feel like first of all i feel like the world would be such a dull place yeah. without people like us yeah. right without the artists yeah. like yeah. with the creators like god made us specifically to tell the stories of people who can't tell the stories for themselves sure. you know sure. um heartbreak or or bliss or um sadness depression like those are things that people can't readily communicate but we have given us you know a special gift i think you know from from the creator where if no matter what emotional state you're in there's a song that you can go and listen to Definitely. you understand there's a movie that you can go and watch that you can feel like oh god this is my story Definitely. um you know you don't get the same from from the science books you don't get the same from and i don't know let me not say that because it may not be fear um i don't dabble in that space i don't know that when somebody's dealing with um micro <laughs> uh, bi- micro or anti whatever antibodies or whatever they don't get that same rush that we get but what i'm saying is how many people can connect like that to to science um you know to somebody working in a lab or whatever not many but a lab can connect with watching mm-hmm. a movie or listening to a song Most so i feel like we're god's gift to, to creation no for <laughs> no, real no offense, to, no offense <laughs> to nobody else you yeah, know but, i just but, feel but, like but, we are the but, gifts but to creation real. and we should be treasured like if the world are done protect we first please you know what i mean because we are the ones who um this this might sound really uh when, when they say you know yeah you're egotistically it might sound that way but um i feel like god uses us to communicate does, you know to and, to people and i really show my appreciation by using this gift to really glorify him yeah and as i was always saying most of my video or whatever i'm speaking i always say that um how can i give back to god yeah i can use this gift to inspire people you right. know and to entertain them make them laugh or, right. you know, or to share someone's story or right. to highlight someone in the community that is doing good right right so that's where i stand you know yeah and I, and I like that you say you know you um you you ask yourself the question how can i change mm-hmm. this particular atmosphere or whatever how can i make somebody laugh how can i make somebody um look into their own situations to say you know either it's not the end or you can keep going or whatever it is whatever like i said like when we just started i say you know storytelling what emotion do you want the person to feel and it it brings me back to something that you had said and i made a mental note of it when we asked that you know is, is filmmaking changing or the landscape of television is changing and you say a lot of persons now have access right mm-hmm. like we've been told to turn our yard yeah, yeah. so people have <laughs> had to one um try to get around 
from go, be, going insane. So everybody's trying to handle or manage their sanity as best as possible. So we found that within the past year and a half alone, we've had a lot more persons come out. Um, I won't say in the filmmaking, in, in the filmmaking space, mm -hmm. uh, but in the content in the content creation space, we've had in the content creation space, we've had people come out who, you know, it's just a, it's a one man show all around. Like people just like you do. Like I know your secrets. <laughs> I won't tell them. But when people ask, you know, how you do it, how you get yeah, all yeah. those angles and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, what people are doing now from the comfort of their homes is to just ensure that they play multifaceted characters. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But even in even. As, as humorous as it is, and it gets us to hold the mirror up to our, our own faces and, and see ourselves in those kind of characters, I still think that there is a need um, for theatre in its most authentic self, authentic. filmmaking in its I, most I authentic know, self. I do, I do, I do. Um. I do like that for real, because you remember back then when the family like come together sit down and watch a good movie yeah. i mean like you really appreciate those moments now when we are watching movies or anything we're like in a corner or on our bed it's with our phones correct <laughs> but i mean the family can be in the sitting room together with their phones and everybody depend them yeah. own a device own a gadget on the same platform on instagram but everybody are watch something different, different. and i mean, you know what I mean that's not nice right <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean things and times are changing and i don't knock it you know when when things change you change with it and you grow with it is is what i usually say but um you know i personally don't think filmmaking is dying i mean mm. people you no, know filmmaking a is lot not less, dying. the truth is a yeah. lot less people are going to school for filmmaking because of the access that they have now right, right. um uh, a man probably not thinks i mean if you go spend four years when he already that work with oh. maybe a safel or a dario yeah. or a kevin and mm. you know have a particular experience unless it is that he wants to transition to a bigger platform which would be like a hollywood yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and to learn from the big dogs and to really come back and <laughs> yeah hone that talent or whatever but um you know filmmaking directing acting that whole entire landscape mm -hmm. it will i think will forever remain authentic no matter what true sure. well, what is changing you know is um we aren't getting much of passionate actors and passionate filmmakers mm -hmm. <laughs> I see most people are really jumping this thing because it probably just look nice and it's yeah. a trend yeah. and you just want to say yeah I'm a filmmaker I'm a photographer I'm a actor or anything like that but most persons aren't really genuine they're not really passionate about this thing yeah all right let's not confuse influencers no mm. with with filmmakers you that's know it, you understand it, yeah. let's not confuse it because you have content let, let me not say influencers let's not con confuse con influencer content creators mm. with uh, filmmakers because mm. i think they're while it seems as if they're doing the same thing the lines are they're not blurred yeah. at all you know what i mean um it takes a special kind of talent and training to do what a filmmaker does with, with with a smartphone yeah. um a filmmaker can apply filmmaking principles and still get the same result using a smartphone because mm -hmm. we've seen that in the space that we exist in mm -hmm. um an influencer without formal training mm -hmm. may not be able to do that yeah but you know? they can just create random content Correct. of their self or anything like Correct. that but they can't probably bring across and be intentional about everything that they it's use. It's the intention. <laughs> yeah. It's the intention. If they do it, I don't think they. Let me not say that because I don't want to offend nobody. Yeah. I was gonna say I don't think they mean to do it, yeah. but um, it's the intention that is different. Yeah, you know it. what I mean? Or they um, do it because it's the trend. So like probably a teal and orange or you the color grade is the yeah. trend, but they don't know why they would use a teal Correct. and orange. Correct. Because we 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 use colors to 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 tell the emotions. Oh, of course. Correct. Um, and I know a few influencers who have been trained formally mm. in the performing arts and those are some of the influences that i follow because i know that when i see them color grade something i know where it's coming from i know that this person is educated in principles of filmmaking and so it's easy to watch their content because you're like oh my god they're so on point i know them use them cell phone for it but they're so on point because they're formally trained in this um you will have others who like you said a color grade it but they really don't know um <laughs> 
you know, just that backstory behind yeah. why you use this particular color or why you set the um the camera at that particular angle. Um, like we can't even talk about angles now. Going into angles, right? Like there are there are scenes where there are certain things where you if somebody's devastated mm -hmm. we can't give a tip right now yeah, yeah. if somebody's <laughs> devastated right <laughs> right if somebody's <laughs> devastated and act, an actor is playing somebody who's devastated there's this thing that the camera does all the time that i absolutely love mm. or when somebody feels alone you don't go you don't go in yeah yeah you open, you open up, up the camera yeah, to yeah, show yeah, the yeah. emptiness yeah, of a yeah, room yeah, with yeah. just them alone inside yeah, of it and i mean we powerful. get so, you understand that, like, powerful, like, correct you get that you get powerful mm. shots based on how you angle your camera and stuff like yes, that. Definitely. If you want to show like someone is left less of authority, you yeah. can like show them real down. Correct. If you want to show them like big and muscular and like yes, Correct. I'm in charge, yeah. you show them like uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, angle up, you know. Yeah. So camera really, if you understand these movements of the camera, you can tell the story. But when you're watching the film you can't explain why you like this film or why you are understanding or why touching because big up Karimak, because um i i when i went to ue everybody know probably know mm -hmm. that right now yeah, and i, I and that. i studied um journalism media so communication yeah so i'm i'm a trained journalist even though i don't practice i'm a trained journalist and one of the things like i fell in love with television so that was what i ended up doing for my exiting exiting documentary mm. for you know graduating from caramac and um one of the things that we had to endure for our television class was just you know pinpointing camera angles and learning what the emotions were for each angle and why why it is that the director did this yeah. shot the way he did it mm -hmm. can i tell you i cannot watch a movie the same anymore because every time like watching a movie now is different from it, it has analyzing. not it has not ruined it you know but yeah. i'm just like sometimes i watch yeah. it and i'm like oh my god if them just get that shot there yeah or 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 we say jano you know something like game in thumbs up yeah wow. because that was so bad like listen if if i watch a movie and the director gets me the film director the editor all of them will come together to make this beautiful film gets me to cry i'm just like listen they they them understand the assignments <laughs> They get it and they understand the assignment. What's good? But, but you have to understand those things before you start applying them thing, there, right? Correct. Because simplicity goes a far away. All right. If you don't understand those things, <laughs> just take a wide shot, <laughs> take your nice medium close, and, and tell your story. Pay attention or, to telling the story. Correct. Pay attention to telling the story as well as research, research that's it. if i mean everybody don't have the the resources mm. to go to you to study True. or to go up to get go abroad to study but we have we have information in the palm of our hands right our here. cell phones you understand i mean start to research directors and filmmakers who you like them work mm. um i mean there are interviews there are countless interviews on the internet with some of these film directors too that you can go through and just figure out what their style is yeah. and try to figure out what yours is um get some tips from them yeah. there like so many things exist where even if you don't have the money to be formally trained mm -hmm. you can work on your of own course. until and and then work and put out content until somebody decide that you know what mm -hmm. um you're really good at what you do maybe them gear boss in terms of working on a particular project or maybe an opportunity comes along where you can get you know go to school get a scholarship or whatever it is so don't think that um just because you have a cell phone and you know um you can create content mm -hmm. you're not going to actually do the research and try to make uh, the the in finding your style as a film filmmaker what you really want to do is set yourself apart from other filmmakers most too definitely, most you know definitely. what i mean like i can look at your work and say this is a safel yeah. um and there are photographers here in montego bay where i can before me even say mm -hmm. them name under them under them piece i can yeah. tell you who shot that oh, right yeah. because there's a particular style that they have it's the same for filmmakers like i was telling you dario's um filmmaking style is so succinct like i can recognize his, his film anywhere um there are other like i I can recognize your films too i know i know your kind of style because mm. i've worked with you countless times i know the angles that you will go for <laughs> and maybe that's because um you don't really work from a script true, so true, i true. i like you just rely on telling the correct, story from correct, the camera correct, correct so i know how you how you put your angles on whatever in terms of the camera so there just try to set yourself apart as a filmmaker like as a storyteller i like i love pull on people's heartstrings yeah, yeah. yeah i love 
I'm good with metaphors. I'm good with repetition because I do poetry as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm good with metaphors. I'm good with, with, um, repetition, like I said. And whenever I'm telling the story, I'm always asking myself if somebody should read this now, be it a doctor mm -hmm. or somebody who has absolutely no interest yeah. in this particular topic, would they be able to connect with my craft? And I mean, I always tell my students because I teach as well. Yeah, I'm yeah, a lecturer, yeah. so I always yeah, tell you can't, my students. You can't keep up with that guy. <laughs> I'm, so I'm a PR keep. lecturer, all right? So I always tell my students, if you're trying to target everybody, you're mm. targeting nobody. Recognize who your target so is. Most definitely. You understand? Recognize who your target is. And um, I don't want to target everybody, but I want to ensure that whatever emotion I'm communicating, if it's mm. sadness, yeah. no matter who is reading it or who is seeing it, they shouldn't, shouldn't look at that particular scene where me I try to create sadness and I laugh. And unless unless sure, sure. them are one associate part and something wrong failed. with them. You I failed. <laughs> Correct. I yeah, mean, and I mean, I have moments to where I wonder if something's wrong with me because yeah. like, Things that really should make me sad, true, I laugh about true, it. True, so, true. You know, for the for the for the coach, for the for the, yeah, with the yeah, psychologist. Yeah. But um, pinpoint that story, pinpoint that emotion that is like your feature thing yeah. that you always ensure that you have in your stories. Whether or your film, whether it's gonna be um, sadness or joy, or sometimes we get people to see themselves. You know, yeah. they're like I love to talk about storytelling because I tell you I've been telling stories since I was a little girl. Uh, one of the things that I tell persons like in in workshops is if you want to write a really good film and you want a lot of persons to appreciate it then they have to see themselves represented in the film so if if you uh we talk about antagonists and protagonists all mm -hmm. the time but those are not the only key mm -hmm. personalities that you want to have across you know yeah. the landscape so you're gonna get somebody who is like for me, I'm just one of those persons who I'm gonna help people no matter what. I'm so helpful. I really don't know how to say no a lot yeah, of the yeah, times. Well, you have, um, to, you have to learn to say no sometimes. I know, you know, but what I'm getting yeah. at is if you're gonna tell a story like that mm -hmm. where, you know, um, a character is so helpful that like they put themselves on the line for people, yeah. I should be able to see myself in that character where I'm just yeah. like, you know, Oh crap, this is me. But then if you want me to understand, like you just said that you have to learn to say no yeah, sometimes, yeah, then that's the climax of the story where yeah. something happens where now I have an opportunity to learn. Am I going to continue to say, um, yes? Or is this an opportunity for me to be able to say no? And so you have that rising action leading to that climax, leading to that resolution. So what is it that you want people to learn? Mm -hmm. And then you introduce the, the five different personalities because you and I have different personalities. I mean, Jada has a different personality. Mm -hmm. Dario has a different personality. If you can get um, those five personalities displayed across film, yeah. then you'll be able to, to have a wider viewership because now people are watching and they're seeing. That's why men don't really like romance a lot of the times <laughs> because... It, it, it's, it's, it's not, not as dynamic as you want it to be, I do, I but like when romance. you, I know, but when you start to mix romance with drama and, yeah, and yeah. thriller, you realize that now you start introducing different personality types where people go, hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'm that character yeah, or yeah, yeah. I know somebody like that. You know what I mean? So you want people to be able to connect with the craft, whether, whether through themselves or knowing somebody who is like that in their lives. And as I speak about protagonists and antagonists, right? Sometimes we need to be realistic in some of these fictional movies that we are doing. It's not all the time the protagonist is going to win, right? And I think we need to see more of these films where we can show like real life situations, you know, in a fictional movie. Because we do understand that sometimes in life we fail. We don't really win all the time. And that's just the way life goes, right? I think I've seen movies like that. Where Some. They're not, they're not they're seldom yeah, to there's, me. There are few. Yeah. Um, but I've seen movies like, movies like that. But I mean... At the end of the day, Safir, you want to give people hope. You want to give people something to look forward to. That's 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 what I said um, originally when I started talking. I was like, you know, this is the reason for film. Like, we're God's gift to mankind. We allow people mm -hmm. to be able to see a story, recognize themselves mm -hmm. or recognize their situation. Um if, if I'm somebody who struggles from depression, yeah. you don't end that story by telling me, boy, I just say life, I'm going to end so, yeah, you know, no. suicide and it's done. So, but we, we need but to make then, them understand that there's still hope. Right. But don't just throw it at them and then make their thing like, all right, within just a split of a second, everything's going to be all right. Even though you, you, you lost the race, even though you didn't um, win whatever you were um, among, yeah. 
there's still hope. Yeah. So you end with hope. But remember, we have, um, I know we start seeing movies with, with two or three hours, and sometimes I think they really go overboard because we can't finish watch off some of them. But we have practically an hour and 30 minutes to tell a story. Mm. So, which is why we have um, the cutaway sometimes, or um, a, there's a term that we use for it where you start to do mashups of, you know, like time flies before yeah, your yeah, eyes yeah. while watching the movie, and so you start to see things pan out the way they do. But we have an hour and a half to tell it. And we have to tell it in the best way as possible. It's a lot, but we, I mean, when you start to introduce different characters, especially if it's like a feature film, you know, it's not just a short film where it can be two people or five people. Um, feature films usually include a lot more, you know, mobility and characters and all of that. So when you have different people coming into the space, into the story, um, it's oh, and a half is not as uh, short as or long as you think. It's not, you know, but watch this. I can watch a feature movie, right? And someone do the short of that same movie and you get the same message. But what is it that's setting a feature movie apart from the, the short? Why would you choose to go and watch the feature movie? Here's the thing. Um, with a short film setting apart itself from a feature film, it's just the time. Right? Short films are But they do minutes get the long. message across and yeah. it's like you didn't miss on anything. Sometimes. Um, short films for me, they leave you with a cliffhanger. Because yeah. even like when you, when you go to short film, short film festival, mm -hmm. what you find is that people afterwards, um, you know, they're like, you should develop this into a feature film because yeah. there are so many points that could have been exacerbated. Exacerbate. No. That word is no. <laughs> See, I'm not good at words in it. Or something like that. I can't remember the word right now. But, um, there's so many points that you could have, you know, gone into a different direction with the story. A fee for me, a feature film, a short film is like whetting your appetite. De definitely. It's like really a summary. And that's the thing. Ne the there's never a conclusion for me. You know, probably that's why you like. No, that's why they, you like they, short there are short films with conclusion, you know, that makes sense. But... A feature film is like you driving to, from Montego Bay to Kingston and someone uh, and say you take like the airplane, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't really get to enjoy <laughs> what you mean? Um, the, the, the whole arm um, from point A to point B, like all these details and the rough roads and then the smooth roads and everything. So I think a feature film really bring all the details together. Probably doesn't make any I think sense. It's apples and oranges. <laughs> I think it's apples and oranges because the vehicle that you choose to go in is the vehicle that you're deciding to go in. Um, if you're going to decide to take the road, mm. then that's that's what you want. Mm. You understand? If you're deciding to take a, a um, an airplane, that's what you want. You know what I mean? Mm. But for if you're going to do a short film, you're doing a short film because you want to tell the story in 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 as in as Shorter space of time as possible, mm -hmm. um, and whatever else it is that your, um, let me not say your expectations, but maybe your objective, right? Because yeah. a lot of persons who do short films are trying to get funding for feature films. You know, it's, it's 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 putting out work so that people can see your work and hope. And then if you're really serious, you put out a short film where you want to get an extension mm. or an or, or you know. Back it if you say, all right, you should turn this into a feature film. A lot of short films have scripts that are well, feature I've films. Seen, seen them, some, them, some people pull the, the pull some things from them feature film scripts true, 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 true. to make I'll that make short, short film. I, I don't even remember what I was going to say, but I think um, feature film, most of these nowadays feature film are drawn out, yes, like yeah. literally drawn out that... Things in there just doesn't make any sense to me. You think so? It's not like, like it has to what be in there. What movies are you watching? Good, Good question, question because what? I'm not watching any movies. No compare your own show because I'm talking about people them things drawn out and you're not watching. But probably that's why I stopped watching feature films. I mean feature films. Hmm. Nah, I think um, there are some where really and truly the story is not told in the best way that it could have been told. But for the majority. I do believe that they tell the stories that they're supposed to tell. When I want to watch like a movie right now, you know what I do? I go back and dig up from like way down there and I bring, I bring, oh, oh yeah. I probably go and watch like a, a Love and Basketball. Really? Uh, that's what it's called? Love and Basketball? Yeah, I, I, I probably watch like a Love Don't Cause a Thing. Uh... 
pursuit of happiness i will watch anything oh man Don't. i will watch anything because like i say everything is a learning opportunity for me mm -hmm. um there are new creators every day there are new filmmakers every day and i want because i'm not in that space i mean even though we're in the space i'm not necessarily in a space where i have the opportunity to learn every day and so when i watch a new film or a new movie that's that's my space to be able to see what my style is or if styles are changing and if there's anything that i like that i want to adapt so um i keep moving okay. with film i keep moving with writing i keep staying up to date as possible uh, as speak speak about that, I mean, mean, what can we expect from kaisha yeah man what is it that you're really gonna specialize in and we can look forward to say that's we a can Kaisha. look forward to more chatting um i've recently just figured out that my my purpose is wrapped up in sharing and sharing through speech i have so much to share i have like my, my entire story is just you know you know you know parts of it too and just my journey um even with my spirituality and I, I believe that god has put something in my heart or on my heart that i need to share with the world and so um i, do, I don't want to say it because here's the thing with me i feel like i need to work in silence and then my action speaks for themselves and then sometimes you you get ahead of the holy spirit and you say certain things and they never manifest because here's something that people need to know there is a um I don't remember what it's called, but there's like a chemical in the brain that once you says once you say something out loud, it your brain registered registers it as an activity that is already done, even though it's not done. And so I've in the last couple of months, because you know I went away and I did a lot of introspection. So in the last couple of months, it's just been me uh trying to hold on to a cer to certain things because I don't want to get ahead of my schedule yet. But things are coming, that's all I can say. All right. that's yeah.